how does DeepSeek R1 compare to OpenAI O1? Well, that's what this graph here shows. Now, I've seen this graph floating around the internet and I had no idea what each meant. So that's the purpose of this video is to explain what are these. I'll tell you what they roughly are and then I'll show you like example question and answers so that you actually understand. And then we can have a look and see, well, how do they actually compete by looking at the graph? So first things first, let's look at this one, AIME. 2024. So for reference, this pass at one means that it has one opportunity to get the question right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. So AIME is the American Invitational Mathematics exam. Basically, it's math questions that are between high school and uni type of level. That's what ChatGPT told me. <laughs> Maybe it's lying to me. One of the example questions that it given me was find the smallest positive integer n such that n squared ends in the digits 76. Now, apparently math is really hard for AIs because they're language models, they're not mathematical. The next one to look at here is code forces. Now, code forces, essentially, I have free for all here, but basically what it is, is it's a platform where you have a pool of people who all do coding challenges, and then based on the results, they are kind of like tiered as who's from best to worst, basically. And you can see here, for example, these are the, the levels, right? And an example kind of question you would get on code forces are given the array, blah, 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 find the maximum subarray, and then you find, find the answer. So that's what code forces is, a platform for people to fight against each other coding. Next, we have the GPQA diamond. Again, pass at one. So sorry, I parcel forces, by the way, as percentile, which means that because you're competing against other people, you're in some sort of percentile of a bell curve. Um, whereas, again, this GPQA diamond is a pass at one. What's a GPQA diamond? Essentially, imagine it like you have an encyclopedia. From that, you have a bunch of questions, and you just ask it these questions and see if it gets it right. And pass at one, that's one chance to get it right. An example question, who painted the Mona Lisa? Example answer, Leonardo da Vinci. But the model must output the correct name on its first try, or it's wrong. And for reference, GPQA is... Graduate level Google proof QA benchmark. <laughs> you can go and have a look um, up if you're interested in any of these specific ones, because I think it's quite interesting if you're going to judge something based on a, a passing a test. Um, what is the test actually testing? So, anyway, the next one is Math 500. Again, pass it once so they've got one opportunity to answer correctly. It's essentially a website or a place that has 500 math questions and it just sees if it gets them right. And you can see it's across a variety of things. An example question being like, so for x, 2x plus 3 equals 11. So a little bit of algebra there. The next one here is MMLU, which stands for Massive Multitask Language Understanding Benchmark. Now they keep upgrading it, that's why there's a pro one. But essentially, again, it is just an encyclopedia type of thing, and then they give you a question. So, for example, we have here, what is the capital of France? Paris. Because it's a pass at one, so they have one opportunity to answer, and that's supposed to be exactly Paris. Now, if you're like me, you're thinking, isn't this and this the exact same thing? What's the difference? Aren't they just having two tries at the same thing? Well, apparently not, but I think... The methodology in which they say it's not the same thing, I understand the methodology, but in this instance, it appears that they are essentially testing the same thing. Because um, the core distinction is the evaluation context. So because it's a metric of pass at k, where k is an integer, i.e. in this case it's 1, it emphasises that it's, you know, they only have one chance to try it. Whereas this MLU, MMLU Pro... EM is an exact match, so it is inherently a one try test, but it's not. But pass at one isn't necessarily because it's pass at key, but it's pass at one, so it is the same. Basically, in short, that's the same thing. That's why I put a picture backwards. <laughs> and the next one is SWE Bench Verified. Now I've put the real world because, and OpenAI, because SWE Bench is essentially this here, which is can language models. Can language models resolve real-world GitHub issues? So on GitHub code repository, there are issues which people report, which are like bugs or things that need resolving. And then can the, an AI, an LLM, go and resolve these issues? Which would be pretty cool. Um, 
so it's real world problems. But the verified version is actually OpenAI's own version of this WE ben SWE bench, or at least their kind of additional layer on top of it to make it more difficult. Um, which does make you wonder how legit it is. But anyway, an example Q&A is write a Python function that returns the factorial of a non-negative integer n. So here's the example answer for that one. Um, and you'll see that here that it's actually got resolved because issues get resolved, i.e. they need an answer, you give an answer, and then it gets resolved. It's not a pass at one or, or percentile, for example. So how do they actually fare? Let's have a look. So we have DeepSeeker 1, OpenAI 01, DeepSeeker 1, 32 billion, Mini, and V3. So the ones that we're interested in are this one and this one, this one and this one, here and here, here and here. So the first two on each chunk. So let's quickly just go through the evaluations. So on the AIME, which again, this is the math one. On the math one, you can see DeepSeek R1 actually outperforms O1 here. Now on the other math one, which is the math 500, again, it outperforms. So if you have math that you want to do, probably don't use an LLM to be fair, but if you're gonna, apparently DeepSeek R1 is better. Now next, let's look at coding. So for code forces, we can see that actually OpenAI's O1 has a higher percentile, 96.6 percentile versus 96.3. And for the SWE bench verified, actually R1 is higher. So if you have standard appeals to me, if you have standard coding questions, then OpenAI is better, like O1. But if you have actual issues out in the real world, so a more full view of how to implement software engineering, then DeepSeek R1 is better, which is interesting. Next, we have the GPQA Diamond, so and the MMLU, which are the two kind of encyclopedia Q&A. And O1 wins on this one by pretty high margin. And then on the other one, MMLU, O1 wins again. Not as high a margin, but it does win again. So overall, you can see that the O1 is better, but the whole point of R1 is not to be better, but to be an open source version, which is almost as good. Because the fact here that it's so high up, so like for instance, it beats the O1 Mini at everything, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, so anyway, there you go. That's a long and short of these AI benchmarks and then how R1 competes with O1. Any comments, questions, queries, let me know below. Till next time, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you later. Take care.